Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Conscious Astrology with Molly McCord, where we talk about different types of energies that are coming up and coming through the cosmos and working with us in our daily physical lives. In this podcast, we talk about different astrological themes on Monday, and on Wednesday, we take a look at the weekly intuitive astrology and energies over the next seven days. So in today's podcast, which is live on September 9th, 2019, I'm actually going to focus on some bigger picture energies that are working with us at a planetary level here on our little planet Earth, how it's affecting us individually, but then also the bigger galactic picture of how every planet and asteroid and fixed star, every entity in our solar system is shifting consciousness. And when we see that bigger picture, we can understand the bigger dance at play, understand the bigger changes that are happening, remove it from simply our personal energy fields, and open up to how the planets are shifting consciousness as well. So I will be honest with you in sharing that this topic is something that came through my guidance from my spiritual team. I actually was sitting down this morning thinking, what am I going to talk about in today's podcast? And then the topic came through, the guidance came through, and I never know exactly what what else is going to come through. So we're all in this together in seeing what messages are for our highest and best good at this time. I do work with different energy councils and guides. Some of them I know very well. Um, Others come in and out. And I'm feeling like this show is very much directed towards those who feel they are starseeds, who identify with different cosmic origins than Earth. Starseeds are those of us who feel we are not of this planet or of the Earth's density. We have been both selected and volunteered to come to Earth to help with the awakening process of the planet, but of the cosmos, of of the bigger picture that's at play. This is something that we choose at a soul level. This is something that you awaken at a time in your life when it's for your best and highest good, but it often creates a lot of chaos and turmoil in what you thought your life was going to be. And the only reason why I'm giggling is because I know this oh so well, and I'm sure you do too. You thought your life was going to be this. You thought you were supposed to blend into the pack and be normal and go through this uh, certain process or that you were supposed to follow somebody else's formula or somebody else's guidance or somebody else's life path. I find that a lot of starseeds, you read information or you take in different kinds of, say, workshops or seminars or teachings, and it doesn't resonate after a certain point because it doesn't support the truth of your own energy. And this is a huge time of awakening for many starseeds. This is a huge time of understanding that your mission is bigger than you thought. And that can be both exciting and a little scary, perhaps. It's different for every person. But it's an expanding of your ability to support the planet, humanity, and the light. And that's a very important message right now is that so many starseeds are here to support the light that is needed on the planet, the light of goodness, the light of integrity, the light of responsibility, the light of power and how power is meant to be used for the highest and best good of all. And the the understanding that there is a grand cycle of energies turning over right now. And I know I keep saying that through many of these podcasts over especially the past year. There's a grand cycle turning over. And it's a bit like, you know, your clothes are in the dryer and they're being tumbled and tumbled and tumbled. And things are shifting and shifting and shifting because there is going to be 
I'm hearing a grand exit that is in the form of energies energies that have built certain structures and those structures are falling. It's a bit like seeing these pillars. I'm seeing three pillars and they're collapsing and they are not going to do so gracefully. Uh, this this is a big deal. This is a big energy uh, explosion. And these systems are crashing because there is no longer the necessary energy on the planet to support those intentions any longer. So there's a bigger picture unfolding. And again, it's not just here on Earth it's a bigger cosmic change. So when we talk about astrology, we talk about it from a very Earth-centric point of view because this is where we physically are. So we're feeling the energies and the tidal waves, uh, if you will, from the moon. We feel the cycles of the sun. We feel the energy of Mercury and Venus and Mars, etc. And it's all from our place in the solar system. But other planets are feeling that energetic dance of other planetary bodies moving around. And they feel it at different intensities. And so you have Mars that also feels the tidal waves of the moon. Uh, You have the sun that also feels the energetic pull of Pluto. So every planet is in a dance with the other planets, which is how this energy exponentially increases. So when we understand that every energy field in the solar system is increasing its own consciousness, it's also increasing its own frequency. Now, here on our planet, we have something called the Schumann Resonance, which is a way to monitor the magnetic field of our planet. And when the Schumann Resonance increases, that's usually very supportive and very energetic, and it's something, uh, it's basically a data point that is measuring what is happening in our collective energy fields. Then there are days when that energy sinks or it's lower, and that's also an indicator of where the collective energy is. And so the message I was receiving is how the Schumann Resonance is one tool that helps us understand uh, the collective energies on Earth. But there are other ways that energy is essentially uh, measured or analyzed on other planets that's outside of what we at a human level could put into data it's out of our wheelhouse so to speak Uh, it's out of our technology it's out of our understanding but we can sense it intuitively we feel it energetically and we've reached a place of consciousness where we understand it that of course that would be possible because every thing is energy all energy has a different consciousness and it all is interacting together. So I hope I'm explaining this well. I'm explaining it as I'm receiving it and also how I'm seeing it uh, visually through the third eye and how it's an understanding that there's literally bigger things happening in the cosmos than just here on our little green and blue marble. So that can help understand more about the bigger picture at play. Now, every planet Um, has a level of consciousness that it works with, especially as it travels through the different astrological signs. And every astrological sign has a lower expression and a higher expression. And what I'm seeing is that every planet and asteroid and moon um, is being pushed to increase its frequency And I'm seeing this as part of a spiral of energy that goes towards the galactic center, a spiral of energy, of how energy moves in a spiral, how it moves in a, in a loop, um, how it's something that we are 
feeling mathematically it'd be the Fibonacci sequence. I hope I'm saying that properly. It's one of those words I read a lot and I don't always say it out loud. So the Fibonacci sequence, it pertains to that mathematically. And it's how there is an increase in spiral energies towards the galactic center because of how on the other side of the galactic center, there's energy there that's mirroring the energy of this galaxy And again, everything is always in relationship. Everything is always working together. So it's sort of like when you you do a tug of war, when you pull on one side of a piece of rope, the other side feels that pull, right? So that's kind of what I'm getting is like there's this tug of, there's this pull through the galactic center that's pulling on the energy of our, of, of our little place in the cosmos and opening us up to higher frequencies but an increase in frequency so essentially the the spiral is increasing the spiral energy is moving faster and then that is being felt the ripple effects of that are being felt so i'm really feeling that at a bigger scale and i hope that helps connect you with what you might be feeling as well. So now I'm being guided to talk about the concept of time and how the concept of time is speeding up because of this increase in the spiral, increase in energies moving faster, and how it can feel like time is moving faster. And I I actually feel like I say this every year. It's like this year went by really fast. I can't believe it's September. But there's something happening at an energetic level that's increasing time The concept of time is changing. Now, there are understandings of how we are actually timeless, that time is an illusion, uh, that there are many timelines happening all at once. And our timeline pertains to how we are here on planet Earth and that our time and our rotation in the solar system relates to the rotation of the sun, of how we have the daylight and the nighttime. We have the moon cycles. Um, if If our little marble was moved further away from the sun, we would have a different concept of time than we do now. Like if our, our planet was, uh, say between Mars and Saturn in the asteroid belt, we would have a different concept of time than we do here. Right? So, What's happening is that our concept of time is changing because of this increase in energy that's happening throughout the cosmos. And we are moving beyond the restrictions of time to be timeless, to be in a present moment of energy that carries us and it will depend on your natal astrology chart how that feels now at this time when i'm doing this podcast it is september 9th 2019 and we have a lot of earth energy in the current chart we have sun mercury venus and mars all in virgo We have Saturn, Pluto, and the moon in Capricorn, and we have Uranus in Taurus. This will obviously change as the the moon moves on. But what I want to focus on is how when the planets are in these Earth signs, our consciousness goes towards our earthly lives, our physical lives, what we need to take care of, what we need to tend to, where we need uh, to look at our finances, where we look at what's in our home, where we look at our money, we look at our body, uh, our jobs, our careers, the maintenance of our lives becomes a focal point. And then as the planets move on into other elements, our attention shifts 
into those areas of consciousness. So, uh, for example, we will soon have many more planets in Earth, or excuse me, in air signs as Venus, Mercury, and the Sun will move into Libra. And it will strengthen the consciousness of the air signs uh, by the end of this month. So this will all be shifting and changing, of course, whenever you listen to this podcast. But whenever the planets are in a specific element, there's a heaviness of Earth in the chart right now. It brings our attention to these matters. And I'm feeling like we are energetically tending to earthly matters from a higher level of consciousness that is not the typical... It's like it's more questioning. I'm feeling a lot of questions like, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing in my day? What am I doing with my body? Am I listening to my body? I feel like there's more questions coming up around earth consciousness at a personal level where you could be thinking about your money and your relationship with money in a different way. You could be thinking about where you live. You could be thinking about your job, your career. Like, where is my life going, my physical life? Um, So there's a big focus on, on these areas in our world right now. Like I'm seeing millions of people having these questions. And all of that pertains to the bigger picture of life on earth. Literally, life on earth, like how you live your life on earth. And there's a rising consciousness right now in how people want to live their life, how they thought they could live their life, how they thought they could construct their days. And there's something that is breaking free. There's something that's opening up within millions of people around their concept of life on earth and I'm feeling this pertains directly to star seed consciousness, which is the essence of energies that you have brought from other places in the galaxy, other places in the solar system, uh, that is like planting these seeds on Earth around new ways to live your life, which is essentially new ways to use your energy. So the star seed consciousness, the understanding that millions are here to do things differently and to bring in new understandings, new practices, new healing modalities, new information, new technologies, new, 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 new. Um, that is part of, I'm hearing, the essential needs of the planet. Essential needs of the planet right now. Because the old ways are dying, dead, no longer needed. The The cycles that are ending require great healing. There will be great healing required across the planet. And there will also be a lot of learning. Learning about power dynamics, where power was given away, where where trust where trust was given away, where trust was assumed. Um, you know, we it's like what I'm hearing is how we are very naive. Um, and, I, and I don't mean that to sound insulting. Um, it's kind of like humanity has been going through ages of spiritual growth. And we have matured in many ways, but there are areas where we've remained naive. And so we're going to step into a higher level of consciousness and power because we're learning where we made assumptions about people, actions, choices, 
uh, we thought so-and-so was operating in the best good of all. Well, there's a lot of humanity that operates in self-interest. You know, in in private ways, where uh, someone could say they're all about for the people, and then underneath it all, they're really about how they can make money and dominate the stock market, right? Like there's different things that people are truly motivated by, and there are theories out there that uh, we are all selfish. You know that we all are selfish in some way, but you can turn that around and say, well, there are healthy self interests. There are things you have to take care of that you are responsible in your life that nobody else can do for you, and you need to make sure those needs are met. But that's meant to be balanced with an understanding of the bigger picture and of uh, relationships and of the people in your lives and, and how you can do good in the world or how you can contribute or benefit others. Part of the rising consciousness is like we're seeing some holes in the Swiss cheese. And we're seeing where we have sunken. And that's what I'm feeling like in my gut as soon as I said that. The sinking energies and how those are great teachers. And now we, as a collective force, can fill in those Swiss cheese holes with new authority, new power, new light, new healing and go from there. It's a bit like in your neighborhood or in your town when uh, they fill in the, oh my gosh, the asphalt. I'm sorry, it just left me. The potholes. (laughs) The potholes. The potholes get filled in. Um, That's part of our work right now on the planet. And that's very much the star seed mission is to energetically fill in these potholes, uh, the the Swiss cheese holes, uh, to fill it in with a new energy that gets planted, forms roots, and it literally creates a new baseline of energy on the planet. And so this is part of the energy of the earth right now, And I'm getting the understanding that other planets are working on different missions. The moon. The moon is quite an interesting um, energy to look at because the the moon, uh, for us, it is related to the feminine, the flows, uh, the emotional undercurrents, and, and the natural cycles of life. The moon is uh, receptive. But what's interesting about the moon is that it actually has been too receptive galactically. It's been abused. Um, The moon is filled with energies that are not publicly disclosed. Uh, The moon and every planet, many planets I should say, not every planet, many planets, uh, the energy that they possess is inside the planet, not on the surface. So you think about all these satellite images and and things that are showing up. Well, the energy isn't outside. It's inside. It's inside the moon. And there are uh, countries and entities who are very aware of what's been happening on the moon. And so the moon has been overly receptive to outside energies. And the moon is rising consciousness in what it allows. Because I'm seeing the moon as a womb, as a womb, and it has been penetrated by various galactic energies and forces that aren't working with its best intentions. I also see the moon as a place of holding resources. So uh, inside the moon, under the surface, the dark side of the moon um, is where energies go in and there are these wombs of resources inside the moon. gold, silver, Um, there's a lot of happening on the moon. But because the moon has a very regular cycle, the energies on the moon time themselves to not be visible. So there's like this cycle of work happening on the moon that we wouldn't see from Earth 
because it it worked with the rotation of our viewpoint from Earth. So um, the consciousness of the moon is shifting to be more fully aware of what it allows inside itself. I'm actually feeling like the moon is uh, very, I'm hearing heavily abused. Um, and there was a story that came out a while ago, I posted about it on Facebook, about how China was looking to launch another moon that replicates this moon. Um, and, of course, that would be something uh, to keep an eye on uh, because it matches with the natural rhythm and cycles of life. And you would also want to trust your instincts about that and what the intentions might be around uh, a second moon. You know, these things aren't public, you know, and that's part of where we're naive is that we think, oh, if something's happening, we're going to hear about it. Well, no, it's actually the opposite. You know, 90% of the things that are happening are not public, are not released. Um, A lot of things are uh, different military programs, are different ways that other countries and entities have endless money to experiment and do research uh, that would never be released to the public. So it's understanding the bigger stories, that there are many bigger stories here, and that we are being asked to follow our own curiosity and to stay in a place of questioning, to stay in a place of, hmm, that's interesting. What else would that mean? Now, I realize all this um, can sound, it can go into conspiracy theories. Uh, a lot of conspiracy theories have truth to them, and then they just get shrouded in that conspiracy theory language to diminish them. But a lot of conspiracy theories have truth to them, and those will be, some things will never be revealed, you know, never be revealed. But other things um, have the potential to come out over the next decade, especially. So every planet is rising in its consciousness, and that's where you're going to feel it in your natal chart. And so there's something about uh, the lunar cycle that's very important uh, for you to be aware of in your chart, because as the moon raises its consciousness, it does work with your own consciousness on your emotional body, on the moon-ruled areas of your life, on how you understand your feelings, on how you honor your gut, your private needs, your inner world. Uh, The moon is meant to tap you into your instinctive nature. And as humans, we have that. We all have that. Uh, But we override it with our minds, and we're so mentally trained. You know, we're so cerebrally focused that we have missed out on years of intuitive development. And you can look at it through the uh, through the lens of education. And you start preschool, kindergarten, elementary school, and so on. And what is being trained in you? Your mind, right? That's, that's the benefits of education. All of this pertains to Mercury, by the way, by the way. Because Mercury is how we process information. It's how we think. It's how we speak. Mercury is language. Um, It's how we are able to do research, how we understand and conceptualize the world. So Mercury is our thinking process. And Mercury is very much about school and education. And so that's what's developed in us from three, four, five years of age. And we don't have a similar system of intuitive development that happens at the same time. There's no, there's no parallel development of our intuition or spiritual self from the ages of three, four, and five unless you are a very advanced, awake parent and you understand the importance of your child developing their intuition and their spiritual gifts from an early age. So we're very heavily focused on the mercurial areas of life and we miss out on developing our spiritual gifts from an early age. Now, there are many children who come in with these gifts very awake. I mean, these gifts are on, uh, you know, are switched to the on button, and they are ready to go. And these are the kids who talk about past lives, um, who have very distinct memories, who are very 
gifted, you know, musically gifted, artistically gifted, intelligent. Um, they they came in with this information because now on the planet we can sustain them, we can support them. There is more awareness around these kinds of talents and how to nurture them, how to honor them instead of how to shut them down or shame them or turn them off. So there are more kids coming in with the desire and ability to develop intuitively and spiritually, uh, which is all part of their energies, right? So they're energetically developing their whole systems. And this is um, perhaps very different to how you were raised, how I was raised. Um, It was all about school and, and your mind and the tests. Right, and the tests you take that determine if you're smart or not, and uh, you know, good or bad about standardized testing. But we are moving away from this, and this is part of how Mercury is raising its consciousness, and how Mercury is showing us more about how to conceptualize energies. And uh, the visual I've been getting is how Mercury strongly relates to the pituitary gland in our brains. And I'm seeing the vega nerve. So mercury is able to activate these other areas of our mind that help us understand information. And the pituitary gland is opening up to more of the intuitive informations and energies that we receive, um, relates to the third eye and the opening of the third eye. So Mercury is expanding its consciousness, and that, in effect, is working with us to expand our consciousness around how we use our minds. Now, one thing that I was uh, given to share with you that's very important is that how these energies are working with us is raising our intuitive nature across the board. And as we individually and collectively raise our psychic abilities, which everybody has, we question more now versus even 10 years ago that we just would have accepted. So there's a rising intuitive development in many people in the world. I mean, it's millions of people. Um, It could be billions. I, I don't feel like we're there with the billions yet because I feel like there's billions of people who are still very much in the 3D of um, survival, day-to-day life, uh, you know, the autopilot energies. But there are millions who are awakened and aware of other energy frequencies. And this allows the questioning. One area of spiritual growth that comes up as you go into this information more, as as you learn your own astrology chart, um, as you understand more of your energy field, you, you can develop your intuition in many ways. Your body, by the way, is a wonderful way to develop your intuition. I mean, it's where we say, oh, something feels off here, or this doesn't sit right with me, or my gut, my gut is giving me messages, or I don't feel comfortable in this situation. Your body is intuitively giving you information, whether that is danger, uh, whether that is question this, whether that is don't agree to something. Um, You know, it's like your body is giving you information because your body um, is very present in the current energies. Your body is very aware of what's in the environment, of what is coming through in the ethers. Uh, Our bodies are very intelligent. But again, we override it with our mind, right? And and that's part of this um, training period that we're in is to look at what messages are is your body telling you and your mind is like poo-pooing, saying, no, no, that's not true, question it, you know, all that. So what's happening is that the... Connection between our body's messages and our mind is strengthening. And we're able to pick up on more information that supports our intuition. And what happens at a collective level 
is that we start to question what we're being told. The stories that are circulating, the narrative that is out there, all the PR stunts. Like, I can't even watch some of these magazines and stories and stuff because it's all a PR stunt, and I see through it. And I know this is true for many of you. You see through it. Like, you can't play this game anymore. It's too exhausting. I mean, any time there's a big PR push for something, well, something's being sold to us. Um, something's being sold, and there's many different angles that that happens at. And it's like this whole um, energy of what can be said that grabs attention. Um, If you watch the news, you know, there's a lot about, of course, the fear programming. And lately, I'd say over the past three to four years, a lot of fear programming has been about the weather um, and how, you know, the weather, extreme storms, extreme fires, extreme, everything's extreme, everything's breaking news, everything's sensationalized, everything's like it's affecting millions of people. All of this is like the typical tricks of the trade for the the 3D mindset that really operates in in that fear mentality and and how to get people's attention. Um, And so what we're doing is rising above it stepping out of that game, stepping out of that playing field, and questioning the bigger intentions. And as we do so, there are certain things that are being fed to us that we call bullshit on. We say that's not even true. That's not accurate. That's not what's happening. And this is rising in humanity. And I think about the quote-unquote suicides that have been reported by famous people. Those aren't suicides. As humanity rises, we question these things, right? And we see energetically what's happening. And that's part of what the Earth's mission is right now, rising in consciousness (laughs) where we don't believe lies, where people can't lie to you. And this happens at a personal level. This is also where you will experience changes in relationships, where you will see friendships that are no longer true because it wasn't what you thought it was. This is the Venus rising in consciousness. Venus is rising in consciousness and how she shows up in relationships and what a true relationship means to her when she is more awake, when she is more in love with herself and her gifts and her worth and her value. And and Venus says, I got to break up with you, sweetheart. I can't hang out with you anymore, dear. We're not a fit anymore because I can't, I'm not compatible. I am not compatible with what you are putting out. I am not compatible with this energy frequency anymore. I can't play into these charades. I can't play into the drama. So the Venus consciousness that's rising within each of us is shifting our relationships and who we can relate to, who we can hang out to. It's making us more aware of how we partner, which is essentially how we share our energies. All right? So there's energies here that are rising in our personal lives, Venus, our personal lives around people that are at the same energy frequency. But in the collective, we're rising in an understanding of truth. Now, this pertains to the rising consciousness of Jupiter. And Jupiter is about the bigger truth, the energy truth, not human truth. Not human truth, because human truth then goes into religion. Human truth goes into judgments. Human truth goes into your opinions. But the rising consciousness of Jupiter is about energetic truth and and the truth of light or the truth of dark or the truth of integrity, uh, the truth of lies, the truth of light. You know, So there's these energies that are rising, and we are feeling it. And we're feeling it individually and we're feeling it collectively and so you have millions of people who are not accepting the stories they've been told and who are now starting to question things that 10 years ago you wouldn't have questioned or you would have just accepted you know there's things that are happening that are being revealed 
that are being uh, shown to us that we weren't ready to see before. Okay? We weren't ready to see it before. And there's these connections being made. I'm also feeling this very strongly as the rising of Neptune consciousness. Now, Neptune makes everything very blurry. It's uh, rose-colored glasses, and isn't this ideal, and oh, this feels so good, and it's when you want to take a vacation for four weeks. Uh, Neptune is where we escape reality. Neptune is uh, very much about how we idealize people and situations. Neptune is Hollywood. Neptune is celebrity. Neptune is the entertainment world or anything that's presented to us in idealized fashion. And that is all changing, right? I mean, that's changing. It's been changing for years, but it's rising and getting bigger, um, such as with the the talents of of Lizzo, right? And and like this is who I am, and and I'm not going to try to be a certain way for you. Like this is who I am. That rising authenticity is part of the rising consciousness of Neptune, which saying which is saying you don't have to pretend to be a certain person, a certain body image, a certain way. You just be yourself. And that's where you're spiritually guided. That's where you're spiritually supported. So the rising Neptune energy is like I'm getting the image of uh, the the curtain being pulled back, but also the image of the earth and and a blanket being on top of the earth, like covering up the earth, and the blanket is being lifted and removed so that that energy of hidden, anything hidden is, is, is being lifted away. And then we see the truth of a situation or we see the, the intentions or we see uh, what was shrouded in illusion. I mean, one example is, magazine covers and how magazine covers are heavily edited and how more and more people have been calling that out in especially the past five years about oh this body was made to be thinner in the thighs or they're they're given a a tan or some color just some color here to look like they're more defined you know all these editing tools that we all have access to on instagram well all of that is clearer now you know, why, why do you want to remove your wrinkles? Or, or, or what's wrong with being, you know, flabbier in the gut, especially if you have been, uh, you know, a mother who, who's had babies, multiple babies. Like, that's still beautiful. So we're, we're shifting what is beautiful, and that's Neptune's rising consciousness. It's removing secrets. It's removing what we didn't see before, but the rising consciousness the rising consciousness is pushing us forward, okay? So again, each of these planets is being pushed by other planets and their rising frequencies. It's all connected. It's all connected, and then it's all connected to us and what we're feeling and picking up on too. Um, So this is going to be interesting as more truths come out, as more things are connected, um, as bigger stories are revealed or shown or or even just questioned. You know, one of the, the interesting things that I came across um, in the past few weeks uh, pertains to the Jeffrey Epstein case. And currently there is a judge who has a list of a 1,000 names of people connected to him, and uh, that judge is now um, having to decide if that will be released that will be public, of course, um, to be fair. That doesn't necessarily mean that these people or someone is guilty uh, by association of something against the law. It just means that they had some kind of connection or relationship. So it's sort of like if those names come out, um, then that unravels many other stories, right, many other parts of the puzzle to be investigated and to be looked at. But one thing that I found really fascinating is that uh, the the stories about you know Jeffrey Epstein's suicide, quote unquote, um, is that the medical examiner who said that he died is the same 
medical examiner for the John F. Kennedy assassination in 1963. Same coroner, same medical examiner. You can look it up. His name is Dr. Michael B-A-D-E-N, Michael Baden, who also was involved in the O.J. Simpson case. And I thought, is there a shortage of medical examiners? Um, but to have that connection between someone who did, who was there for the JFK assassination in 1963 and then somebody who was there for the Jeffrey Epstein uh, issues in 2019, obviously somebody with a very long career, right? Um, but more to question there, right? More to think about. So it's those kinds of things that are coming out, and it's coming out because we're also in this Aquarian age, which pertains to the energy of Uranus, uh, also related, I'd say, to the energy of Mercury, of communications, and how we are in touch with each other more than ever, how we have access to people all around the globe like never before. And it's because of this. It's because of the communications that things come out. Information is shared. Information is passed. Stories emerge. Uh, and those stories can disappear, and they can gain momentum. So there's a lot circulating these days. I mean, there's so much happening that you're feeling it, and you're feeling the curiosity. You're feeling that something is off. You're feeling deeper questions, and you should trust that. Please trust that, because that is part of how we are rising the consciousness of the planet, rising the consciousness of our lives, and how we are here to help fill in these potholes, to help increase the Earth's energy field to higher frequencies. And I'm also hearing, uh, before I sign off, that... We're not meant to fight it. Uh, I'm hearing flow, don't fight. Flow with the energies. Flow with the bigger uh, waves. Flow with your intuition. Flow with your body. Flow with what is coming up. It will challenge us. It will challenge what we have believed or what we thought was right or what we thought was happening. It will challenge us. But if you can flow with it without attachment, that flow of energy will take you further. And that I'm hearing that flow is your friend. That flow of energy is your friend supporting what is for your best and highest good. So, Energy frequencies are changing, elevating, rising. We are, we are dancing together uh, on the planet, but we're dancing with bigger energy streams. We're dancing with an increase in the spiral energies. We're dancing with this galactic center energy. There's a lot going on. I mean, we're dancing so much, your feet could be tired. But there is meant to be a flow with it, and you are connected with others who are doing the same. And I think the final message I want to leave you with is that at a soul level, you knew you could do this. You knew you wanted to be here. At a soul level, you said, I am there. I will co-sign with this. I am showing up. So understand that there's this bigger force within you that's also supporting these big energy changes as humanity changes, as we energetically shift our self-definitions, and as we do it uh, with bigger energies as well. Thank you for joining me. I hope that there were some good pieces of information in this show for you. You can find out more about me below this podcast as well as the astrology uh, classes that I offer. Um, you, you can learn about your chart through an introductory astrology course. Uh, you can learn about relationships 
in your life through my class uh, called The Astrology of Relationships. And it's 10 different videos, all these different areas of relationships that are shown in your chart. It's really quite cool to make those connections. And then there's also a weekly class where you can ask questions. And you can ask questions about your chart and what's happening for you. And so that's where I am more engaged with people and interactive is through that weekly astrology transit class. Um, So check those out if any of those are of interest to you. Otherwise, I'll see you back here on Wednesday where we will talk more about the specific uh, astrological aspects and transits that are happening right now. Thank you so much, friends. Grateful to connect with you at this time, and I'll see you back here soon.